The day has come, Dying Light 2 finally has guns. Today I'll be showing you all the features added with this update and also comparing the firearms from the two games. This is how my script was supposed to start, before I got to play the guns update. But now, after playing it, I can safely say that this is one of the worst and most disappointing updates Dying Light 2 ever had. First, let's talk about the actual guns update. When you start the game, you receive a marker about a new mission that will guide you and give you access to the new weapons. Eventually, once you progress the mission, you will have to do one of these small challenges for survivors that were added with this update. We'll talk about them later because they're also pretty bad. After you complete the side activity, you cannot progress the Lost Armory quest. In fact, you can't progress any of the other quests. That's because, despite completing the activity, the game still thinks that you're in this challenge, meaning that no infected spawn and you can't talk to any characters. Back when GRE aberrations were introduced, there was a similar glitch that was basically creating a death loop. Although there, you could fix this problem by simply leaving the game. But in this case, you can't do that because you have infinite health and stamina, which means you can't kill yourself. And if you exit the game and load back in, the quest will be counted as failed and thus you will have to redo the survivor mission again. And I have done this quest around four times and each and every single time I just got soft locked and couldn't progress the mission. And I get it if I was the only unlucky person to have this happen to, but apparently many other people have the same exact issue. Meaning that not only I can't get access to the weapons and make a video about them, but a lot of other players can't enjoy the new content. And my question is, if this bug is so popular that comments on missions like these are filled with people having this issue, how did Teclan not notice it? And how did they not fix it? Or are you telling me that there was only one person who playtested the entire update? This is ridiculous, but it's just the beginning. You see, if you go to the store, you can get a free bundle, but alongside it, there will be a weapon that obviously belongs to this bundle, but instead, it's sold separately for a price similar to the other bundles. So it's either you buy this one gun that has a somewhat cool looking skin, or a bundle with a new character skin, a new paraglider, a unique weapon, and a weapon blueprint. This is such a scam, especially if you consider that you need to buy it with dying like points. But whatever, let's ignore that, because as we all know, Techland is a very niche indie developer that really needs money. Let's actually discuss the gun gameplay. Despite me not being able to obtain any guns because, well, I can't complete the quest, I could still redeem the pistol that is given to you with the update. And I don't think I have to tell you that I was expecting the gun combat to be at least on the same level as in Dying Light, maybe a bit better. But it's actually worse. Well, to be honest, the animations look nice and fresh, but that's all. Everything else is just worse. First, we have the aiming, because for some reason the default aiming key is left control. Because right click on your mouse is already taken by the block skill. Now, can someone please explain to me why would I ever want to block when I have a ranged weapon? The entire point of ranged weapons is that you are far away from the enemy and thus he can't attack you, but you are much more vulnerable if he comes close to you. And I know what you will probably tell me, but if you don't like the default aiming controls, just change it in the key bindings, but the problem is that the block key is the same for all the weapons. So by making my gun gameplay more enjoyable, I will handicap myself while using melee weapons. Although to be honest, I pretty much never use the block skill, but I know that many people do actually utilize this mechanic. But that's just a small inconvenience to which you get used to, so let's actually look at how the guns behave compared to Dying Light. And here once again, Dying Light 2 makes a very bad job at imitating its predecessor. Whenever you had a gun and you were pointing it at a bandit who had only melee weapons, they were actually scared. 
putting their hands up in the air and distracting you so others could attack you from behind, just as it was done in the very beginning of the game. In Dying Light 2, however, Renegades completely ignored the existence of guns. They just keep on fighting as if asking to receive a bullet in their head. This is made even worse by the fact that everyone in Villador, including Aiden, thinks that guns are completely gone and those bandits should be genuinely terrified of you managing to get your hands on something as powerful and as rare. And the worst part is that this mechanic already exists in Dying Light 2, because when clearing some random events that involve bandits, sometimes when there's only one bandit left, he can actually put his hands in the air, drop his weapon and run away. All Techlink had to do is just copy this exact behavior, well, except for the one in away part. And that's all. But these are just small details, so let's actually talk about the combat. Of course, guns make a lot of noise, and thus this would attract nearby biters and spawn pyros. And in Dying Light, whenever you shot a gun, you had time to prepare yourself, to not only finish what you're doing, but to also climb somewhere to get ready to fight off the virals. But here, the infected spawn immediately after you shoot, not giving you any time to prepare or just to even think. Not only is this feature extremely annoying, but it also ruins the immersion, because in Dying Light, virals had to not only hear the sound, but also register it, understand where it's coming from, and then crawl out of the place where they were hiding. But here, they immediately appear, as if they just wanted a reason to be summoned. Also, one thing I've noticed when recording the footage is that different weapons spawn different amounts of virals. For instance, a shotgun deals a lot of damage and thus makes a lot of noise, and that's why many virals spawn even if you make only one single shot. Meanwhile, if you use something like a revolver or a pistol, you will have to fire it multiple times for virals to spawn. But in Dying Light 2, you make one shot from one simple pistol and the virals right behind you. Now, the main reason why virals even spawn is to balance out the guns, because in exchange for dealing high amounts of damage, you have to fight more infected. But in Dying Light 2, this is completely useless, because guns do less damage than bows and crossbows. Now, because Techland doesn't playtest their game, I can only compare the starter pistol to my bow. And yes, my bow does in fact deal much more damage. But from what I've heard, semi-automatic crossbows are better than the rifles you can get. Now, I will not talk about it in too much detail, because I can't get access to the guns. Speaking of which, I think it's time we talk about how to actually get the weapons. After you complete the Lost Armory quest, another fourth agent is unlocked and you can buy weapons and ammo from him. This is the only way of getting ammo and guns. Now let's compare this to Dying Light. There were a few ways of getting guns, whether it's looting them from the corpses of bandits, crafting them yourself using the blueprints, or buying them from shops for a rather hefty price. But the main method that pretty much everyone used is to go and find them on specific locations. For example, you could find them in police vans, because the police was supposed to clear the infected, or you could also find them in some stashes as a reward for completing a quest. Of course, whenever you looted a weapon, you also received ammo for it, but there were many other ways of getting ammo. For example, in the following DLC, lots of military outposts were scattered around the map, where you can find crates of ammo or loot the ammo from the infected military you have just killed. What do we have in Dying Light 2? Just one simple vendor. Even though Velador is filled with military blockades, convoys and even tanks. And you know what you find in those tanks? Valuables, not even grenades or C4 or mines or just anything that the military uses. Just valuables. And you know, Teclan actually made it so you can find ammo here. But they did it by putting a random crate that doesn't even fit the scenery. It's just so out of place. 
And what's even worse is that it contains two random ammo types. Meanwhile, in the following, you could get a package that contained every single ammo type. But hey, I hear you say, the GRE took all the guns away from the people and hid it in special locations. It's explained in the quest, and that's true. But don't you think it would have made more sense to hide the guns in different locations? So even if someone found out about them, they wouldn't get Villador's entire arsenal. And imagine how interesting it would have been to search for secret stashes left by the GRE that contain weapons and ammo. But fine, let's consider the vendor option. But the problem with this is that it also makes no sense. Of course, I haven't completed the questline, but I would assume that in the end you actually get access to the weapons, and it's so bizarre that you don't actually get to keep any of them. Instead, you have to do missions for a vendor to increase your reputation to be able to buy guns. And this is how every single agent in the game worked, but here it makes absolutely no sense. This man specifically called Aiden because he knows he's a good man. He knows that Aiden could be trusted with the guns and that after getting his hands on them, he wouldn't go ahead and shoot everyone in the fisheye. So why does Aiden, who already made a name for himself, have to do some crappy daily and weekly quests to increase his reputation and get access to guns? This made sense with all the other agents, because they didn't know him and didn't know what he did. And also because Aiden first approached them, unlike here. But this man knows Aiden, he understands that he will help him and that's why he gives him this quest, so why doesn't he let him get the guns? And I actually know why. So the player has even more shitty daily bounties to do in order to keep him playing the game each and every single day. The entire point of these chapters and the tackling GG bounties and even those new missions on the bounty boards is to elongate the gameplay as much as possible. So even after the update was released and everyone talked about it, people still play the game. And you know why Teclan does this? To push the player count higher, to make new people buy the game and to make players who already brought the game get the overpriced bundles. People play Dying Light 2 because it's like a job, there's always daily, weekly bounties to do. But in Dying Light, there's only one daily bounty. And trust me, people don't play it every day, because there's one bounty to do. Speaking of buying bundles and such, the Carnage Hall DLC is now completely free. Now, as a person who has the Ultimate Edition of Dying Light 2, meaning that this DLC was pre-ordered automatically, I don't ask for a refund. But what I do ask for is at least some sort of reward, maybe a special skin, or a unique hat, or just anything that will show others that I've actually had the DLC before. But hey, at least Declan fixed the crystal cores not spawning Dark Hollows, even though this glitch could have been fixed in a couple of hours. Okay, maybe days if you're really lazy. But instead, they took multiple months to do that. If at this point you still didn't write any hate comments, first of all, respect to you, and second, you can go ahead and watch this video on your screens right now, which is the exact opposite of this one. Thank you everyone for watching, remember to like and subscribe, and see you in the next video.